China has become the world's second largest economy, but it has also become a class society, divided by growing gaps between rich and poor, urban and rural, coastal and inland. Left behind children must endure the absence of their parents and the lack of quality education. And those children who float with their parents in the cities have their own problems. They have become too urbanized to return to the countryside, yet not sufficiently urbanized for the city to be their home. But now, with the great flood of migrant workers inundating the cities, new problems arise. Some migrants become street vendors. There is increasing crime and fear. Some say strict urban governance is needed. China's President Xi Jinping described the Chinese dream as the great rejuvenation of the Chinese nation. China's leaders tell me that the dream is for China to be harmonious, beautiful, civilized, strong, and modern. Today, China is not so. I'm Robert Lawrence Kuhn. For more than 25 years, I've been watching China change. I wrote the book, How China's Leaders Think. This series explores the new thinking and hard choices needed to make the Chinese dream a reality. To realize the Chinese dream, China must be harmonious. This means that China's diverse peoples, groups, regions, religions should get on well together. China has become the world's second largest economy, but it has also become a class society, divided by growing gaps between rich and poor, urban and rural, coastal and inland. China's economic miracle was built on the backs of millions of workers who migrated from farms to cities, laboring in factories, becoming an underclass. Economic and social gaps do not make people happy, and unhappy people do not make a society harmonious. January 16, 2014, the Chinese New Year, the Spring Festival, is two weeks away. And today is the first day of the spring travel rush. For Chinese people, the Spring Festival is the year's most important holiday, and everyone wants to spend it with family. To be home for the holiday, 250 million Chinese will travel by train. It's a massive migration in reverse. Large numbers of workers moving from farms to cities, reflecting the massive gap in standards of living between coastal urban and inland rural areas. This gap also leads to disparities of resources and opportunities, among which education stands out.
During the spring festival, workers' neighborhoods are largely empty. But some people can't make the long journey home. Yang Ming Jin is a carpenter in Shanghai. He lives in a one-room house with his wife and two young children. His construction project is not finished, and he couldn't get time off to visit his home village. Travel is also expensive. On the festival eve, the family celebrates with a traditional meal. But one family member is missing. Yang's older daughter, Ying, lives with her grandparents in their home village in Guizhou province, far from Shanghai. <laughs> Children separated from their migrant worker parents, like Yang's daughter, are common. They are called, sadly, left behind children. In order to attend school when their parents move to cities, these children stay behind in their home villages. Media is filled with heartbreaking reports about left behind children. They suffer from depression, isolation, even abuse. How does Yang feel as a parent, leaving one of his children behind? Yang tells me his annual income could reach around 50, 60,000 yuan, but his monthly living expenses consume more than half of it. Ying used to attend kindergarten here in Shanghai, but after Ying's parents had her little sister and brother, it became impossible to take care of three kids, so Ying was sent back to Guizhou. Does the whole family sleep in the same bed? Yang Ming Jin's home is a single room, barely a dozen square meters. It costs 500 yuan a month. When was the last time you actually saw him in person? <laughs> Tianqing Chao is one of the poorer villages in Zhenyi City, Guizhou Province. This is where Ying lives. The annual per capita income is just over $600 a year. The primary school here has 216 students. 80 of them are left behind children. Ying's grandparents' home is 20 kilometers away over mountain roads. It takes almost a full day for Ying to make the trip. During the week, she lives at the school. To improve the lot of these left-behind kids, the school installed a chatting room supported by Shanghai Aid. 
，叫杨明吉。妈妈叫我父母。他们在哪里啊？他们在上海。嗯，从学前班开始走。Video chats or phone calls are the only communication Ying has had with her parents in two years. Hello,你好。弟弟叫姐姐，姐姐来。你那是什么？跟妈妈说。啊，你在那边过得好吗？嗯，我就每天待弟弟妹妹呗。你考试考得好不？考试考了八十几分啊。学习你一定一定不要不
And those children who float with their parents in the cities have their own problems. They have become too urbanized to return to the countryside, yet not sufficiently urbanized for the city to be their home. Pisun Village in Beijing is 33 kilometers from Tiananmen Square. It turns quiet during the spring festival, except for the roar of planes overhead. Beijing Capital Airport is nearby. Most Beijingers have never heard of it, including taxi drivers. But this seemingly ordinary village is special. There are only 1,000 local residents and about 20,000 migrant workers. Most work in construction, factories, and service. Fu Wai Min has been working in Beijing for more than 20 years. He lives in Pizun Village. As a father of three children, he insists on having his kids with him so they can have more opportunities. Fu Cheng Long is the youngest son of Fu Wei Min. He's lucky not to be left behind. This play highlights the difficult decisions that migrant parents must make. I marvel at their spirit, making the best of their lives in the shadow of Beijing's great power and wealth. Chung Long and his sister, Ting Ting, are both in the sixth grade. Because they are not local residents, migrant workers like Fu Wei Min do not have the local residency certificate called a huko. This means that they are denied vital social services, such as health care and quality education for their children. City governments struggle to find solutions, but they just cannot afford providing migrant workers full benefits. Hoshame 以后，如果说这个连一个平等的教育的机会都没有，他们就生活在在这个社会的夹缝中。Cheng Long and Ting Ting are about to graduate and enter junior high school, but unequal education is a major problem, preventing the new generation of migrant workers from making the city their permanent home. 复刻所在地无人监护证明，这个已经拿回去了。Like Fu Wei Min, migrant workers now think differently. They are no longer satisfied with making money in the city in order to buy a house in their rural hometown. Their dream is to integrate into city life, but they need help.
I'm heading to Pisun's Cultural Development Center, which serves Beijing's migrant community. Its director, Sun Hong, shows me around their labor museum. Every year since reform was initiated, there have been more than 100 million migrant journeys. This is the so-called floating population, which enabled China's economic miracle and created great national wealth. In fact, China's migrant workers changed the world's economy. The Huko system, while necessary at a time to assure China's food supply and to control China's vast population, has reached the end of its efficacy. In recent years, the Huko system has stifled migrant workers, erecting social barriers and preventing their progress. But loosening residency requirements has massive financial and administrative burdens. In addition to the museum, the Migrant Family Center organizes cultural activities and training sessions. A festival of workers is held twice a year, where workers from across the country gather to share their experiences. After years of debate and ever-increasing pressure from migrant workers, who are no longer willing to remain passive and quiet, China has decided to turn 100 million rural citizens into urban citizens by the year 2020. It is a historic social transformation. In addition to reforming the Hukou residency requirement, China's policymakers are also shifting development to rural areas and building new suburban areas, seeking to divert the torrent of laborers into the big cities. I go to Renmin University to ask noted economist and sociologist Wen Tie Jun about the problem. We have a 3,000 county central town. We have 40,000 townships. Among these 40,000, a three-fourths it's a construction town. All need infrastructure investments. If we try to turn this capital invest into the countryside, certainly the laborers will follow the capital and then take the cash drop in the countryside. Why not? So let's try. Yeah. We don't want to go follow this uh, very traditional way. But now, with the great flood of migrant workers inundating the cities, new problems arise. Some migrants become street vendors. There is increasing crime and fear. Some say strict urban governance is needed.
Urban law enforcers are known as Chungwan. Their job is to maintain order in cities that are increasingly chaotic. As migrant workers stream in, the benefits of city life can be disrupted. City residents can be bothered, even frightened. Chengguan is supposed to assure order and harmony, but their tactics can be heavy-handed. An unlicensed vendor has moved her food stall onto the street. Things can get quickly out of control. Because Zhangguan lack clear legal guidelines for their enforcement work, some resort to strong-arm tactics. Frequent news reports show Chengguan confronting and sometimes beating street vendors. In some provinces, the Chengguan have been little more than local thugs. In some instances, the conflicts have led to riots. To deal with public scrutiny, the Chengguan have embarked on a campaign to inform the public of their many law enforcement functions. Besides routine patrols, they oversee the demolishment of illegal buildings, cite residents for improper waste disposal, respond to emergencies. In fact, the Chengguan have some 68 functions in nine categories, all designed to improve city life. This is Shanghai's Songjian district, called the origin of Shanghai. Two-thirds of its 1.5 million residents are migrant workers. The Chengguan are on a routine patrol, and I'm tagging along. We inspect shops and roadside stalls at random. Meng Yang Chao is 27 years old. He's a recent Chengguan and decidedly not a typical one. Meng graduated from Newcastle University in the UK with a master's degree in international business management. In 2013, he joined the urban management team in Songjiang. Uh, are there times when somebody's not cooperative? Because they, do they get, ever get angry or they just always do it? Uh, no, uh, some people will get angry and yeah. they don't do this. Keeping the city attractive is a prime Chengguan responsibility. They make sure that merchants display their goods in a lawful manner and do not clutter sidewalks with their wear. Another more notorious role is evicting illegal street vendors. Meixing Road in Songjen is the entrance to an upscale living community. The road is less than 100 meters long, yet it is filled with vendors, migrant workers from poorer provinces selling vegetables, fruits, and other products. As soon as Chengguan come, vendors pack up without argument.
Local residents complain that the helter-skelter skew of stalls impairs the city's appearance and decreases its livability. The stalls can cause traffic jams and become safety hazards. But why, despite repeated prohibitions and a high-quality food market nearby, does the illegal business continue? The legal vendors in the market are eager to tell me why. Why so few customers in the market? Why so many at the street vendors? For the most common of reasons, the vendors' prices are cheaper. The market decides. And that's why the cat and mouse game between vendors and Chongguan goes on. Soon after we left Meixing Road, the vendors returned. Chongguan是把矛盾其实就来源于群众的需求，有的群众的需求还属于一个低层次，他们希望通过摆摊去获得他们的一个生存的需求，但有的群众其实他们就生活比较富裕，希望能够追求一个更好的生活环境，就没有
Increasing numbers of senior citizens are straining municipal services. I hear that visiting the elderly is now the law here, written into the Pension Act. Could I be fined or worse if I do not visit my parents? In China's traditional culture, great respect was paid to senior citizens, and large families took care of their oldest members. But Chinese society has changed radically. Families are smaller, people more mobile. It's a perfect storm for the elderly. Due to China's one-child policy, a large migrant population, and competitive demands of the market economy, the long-standing expectation of raising children to provide for one's old age no longer works. Employed adults simply cannot care for their elderly parents, especially during the day. Fu Feng is the eldest son of senile parents. At age 60, he's just become a senior citizen himself. Whenever possible, he takes his parents to Yugu Village, a local senior daycare center. There are about 340 senior daycare centers like this in Shanghai. Most of their operational costs are subsidized by local residential communities. With an annual subsidy of over 20,000 yuan for each senior attendee and a 2 yuan subsidy for every meal, nearly 60,000 elderly people can be serviced in Shanghai. How do participants try to enjoy every day to the fullest? Many here are my age. Some, I'm disturbed to learn, even younger. <laughs> Yao Shui Fun has been working here since the center opened in 2011. She is familiar with every senior in her care. 25到90到時候陸陸續續過來,然後3點半到4點的時候陸陸續續回去,我們的經費是每位老人一個月交150塊,叫託費。With its low fee and professional nursing staff, the daycare center is popular with the elderly and their families. Lunches are nutritious and delicious. For those elderly unable to attend, but who live nearby, a Meals on Wheels service delivers daily. The cost is only one yuan. While daycare works for some, and home-delivered meals for others, Many of Shanghai's elderly require more intensive care. Eighty-seven-year-old Zhang Shuijian lives in Jing'an District. 
Ten years ago, she broke her left knee and needed an artificial replacement. For years, her physical capacity has been declining. Thankfully, Zhang has help. From 48-year-old Chen Lin, a migrant from Anhui province. With Shanghai's aged population growing, there aren't enough home care helpers to care for the 85% of seniors who are homebound. China continues to grow older, and the social system providing their care needs new thinking. Xu Jun is deputy director of the Civil Affairs Bureau in Shanghai's Jing'an district. She manages services for the aged and has an insider's view of senior care. In 2013, the Jing'an district launched Shanghai's first public technical training for caregivers of the incapacitated elderly. Participants are mainly migrant housekeepers who have never before received proper education. After training, they're evaluated. Those who pass are awarded a professional nursing certificate, which aids their application for Shanghai residency. China is exploring new methods for supporting its elderly citizens, combining home care, community care, and nursing homes. Solutions are needed soon. China's aging population will peak within 15 years. Yang Mingjin's construction project was completed. Yang accompanied his wife and young children back to their hometown. After a short stay with his family, he returned again to Shanghai but this time alone. To enter junior high school, Fu Chenglong and Ting Ting were compelled to return to Pura Hanan province with their mother. Their father and eldest brother remain in Pitsun village. Sung Han and his friends are now hard at work producing the new culture and art festival for and by migrant workers. Meng Yang Chao still hopes for a law to provide clear behavioral norms so that Cheng Guan can enforce regulations while avoiding conflicts. In July, a new elderly daycare center designed for the disabled old was established in Jing'an district to provide professional aid. This is China on the move. China's railway stations exemplify the hustle and bustle of mass travel. For every worker who migrates from farmlands to cities, there are responsibilities to take as well as dreams to pursue. China's immense population flows reflect unprecedented urbanization. 
What kind of society awaits such a China? Perhaps a new wave of economic prosperity and cultural abundance, or perhaps the opposite. What lies ahead depends on the Chinese people. The Chinese people can realize the Chinese dream. The Chinese nation can be fully rejuvenated, but only when Chinese society is truly harmonious. <laughs>